bum, bum, da 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 bum, bum, da. Hey guys, what's up and welcome back or to the Roomies Digest. My name's Christine and if you clicked on this video, you know we are in for another riveting round of Battle of the Books. Now, if this is your first time joining us for Battle of the Books, I'll give you a short rundown. Essentially, I have asked creators from Book Talk, Bookstagram, and Booktube to recommend me a book. Each month I try to do a genre specific or a certain type of book to kind of keep it fair between creators. And I also try and pick creators that read said genre or have really good recs for said genre. During the month, I rank each of these books, ranking them via the Caw Pile method, which was originally created by Book Roast, which I'll have linked down below if you guys are interested in rating your books this way too. But essentially the person who has the highest Caw Pile number is the winner of that month. At the end of the year, the platform that has won the most months or like gotten the most points throughout the year is the official platform that has the best recommendations. Now, so far, BookTube and BookTok are neck and neck. They both have one point. So hopefully, you know, I don't want to call, I don't want to say, you know, an underdog situation, but I'm hoping that Bookstagram can catch up. All of the creators have graciously agreed to send me a video with their recommendations, which we will get to in just a second. But I first want to introduce to you who we are going to be seeing in this video. So if I was a smart person, you know, if I planned ahead like months and months and months in advance, I would have said, yeah, March would be a great month to do middle grade March. That would have made sense. But instead I did something crazy and I basically said, what do I want to read next? I want to read some general literary fiction. Okay. Let that sink in, okay? Not necessarily women's fiction, but general literary fiction, which could be women's fiction, general literary fiction. Okay, what does that even mean? That means books that are aiming to reflect real life, okay? So no fantasy, no sci-fi, all my favorite things. Real life is scary, okay? And that's why I think general lit is so scary to me. That's why I don't read a lot of it, but the, the stuff that I do read really good, really freaking good, okay? One of my favorite general lit fiction books is actually The Vanishing Half. Like I could read that book over and over again and not get tired of it. I don't know why, but it's just, it's got the juice for me. So I'm really excited because I hope that I get some really good recs from the creators this month. And I hope that I kind of rekindle my love of general literary fiction, if I ever had a love of general literary fiction. So the first person that I want to talk about today is my book bestie, my girl, my gal pal. She lives in California. Monique and I have visited her so many times. She's been in so many vlogs and really is just such a down-to-earth cool girl cool girl always has the best Rex, and she is going to be representing booktube that is noelle seven pages noelle and i bonded over booktube we just had the same kind of vibe like i don't know how to explain it really like i felt like two magnets kind of like connected but she's just like the coolest person like such a good friend and i'm really excited because she always recommends books that i literally have never heard of it's always literary fiction too that like she's got such good recs i'm always excited for her literary fiction recs even though i have no idea what's going on or what they could possibly be about so i'm really interested to see what she's gonna recommend me because i'm never good at guessing like i i am never good at guessing like even for my birthday she always gets me these obscure books that i've never heard of before but somehow are always perfect for me so i'm really interested okay i'm really interested i think she's gonna do a good job I and mean, that's not just because she's my book bestie but if i had to choose a book that like i think she would recommend me honest to god i have no idea Y'all, I have literally no idea what she could recommend me. I think this is gonna be the category where like I literally will not know what anyone is gonna recommend me, even though I gave every single person my own TBR. So let's just get straight into the video because I truly have no idea. And you know, we just, we don't wanna waste any time. We don't wanna waste any time. So let's see what she recommended me. Hi, Christine. I'm so excited. I'm like giggly. I can't wait to recommend you this book. Um, thank you so much for asking me to recommend you a book. Um, I had a good old time trying to guess what you were going to guess that I was going to recommend you. And I don't think I've you already would have guessed it. this one. I had so many that I thought I could recommend you, but I wanted to, you know, specifically make sure that you were going to like it. So my Christine 
specific literary. Wait, okay, maybe she might recommend me Cleopatra and Frankenstein. Is that what that one's called? I don't know. We'll see. All right, let's go. Literary fiction recommendation is Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead, which is kind of a literary thriller, but it's very atmospheric and focuses a lot on nature. It has almost like a like a fairy tale feel to it. It just has like this very specific like a vibe to it, I guess. And the whole time you're like, what's the moral of the story? What's the lesson in the fairy tale? Why does tale, this sound know? amazing? This was also translated from Polish and then released in English a couple of years ago. This is about a middle-aged woman in this remote, like snowy Polish village. And she kind of like lives by herself. She takes care of the other people in the villages like summer homes during the winter. She spends her days studying astrology and translating poetry and like hanging out with like animals more than humans. And then strange things start happening in their like little Polish village. People see her as like the village crazy lady basically. So she's like struggling to like let her voice be heard. And it is just such a good wild ride. So. I hope you love it. I can't wait to hear what you think of it either way. Um, and I can't wait to see what other recommendations you get. Um, I just love this series. So there you go. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> I love that you told me exactly what the book is about. So I don't even have to look it up. You are the goat. You are the goat, Noelle. Okay, so this is giving um, Once We Were Wolves. Is that what that book is called? It's giving that energy, which I loved. I gave that one a five star. It was a thriller technically, but also was kind of like a conversation about just like ecology, the world, and how we're taking care of ecosystems. And obviously it had wolves in it. So it's giving that energy. I really like that book. So I really think that I'm gonna like this book from Noelle. Wow, what a freaking wreck. That's amazing. Thank you so much, Noelle. I'm super excited for that one. So the next creator that I wanna introduce to you guys is actually from TikTok. She is a lit fic reader. She reads romance as well. I think she's gonna give us a lit fic recommendation and actually the person that I don't know the best from this group, but from what I've seen on TikTok, she gives really great recommendations and I just love her vibe. Like I love to just kind of like sit and watch her talk about books because she's so excited. Her energy is just so pure and like lovely to watch. And I think she does a really great job of kind of like talking about books and explaining like what's going on, which let's be honest, that's what I need for lit fic. You know what I'm saying? Her name is Ilana. So I'm really excited to see what Ilana has for my book rec. Um, let's just go ahead and get into it because honestly, I have no idea. You know that last minute, you know, dive for guessing Noelle's book? Like, I have no idea what Alana could give me. It could be literally anything, okay? So let's see what she's got going on. Thank you so much for asking me to do this. I am truly honored. <laughs> I read from a handful of different genres. I really think that you are expecting me to choose a lit fic book for you, which is fair because I post about lit fic a lot. But when I was looking through your physical TBR list, I noticed that you had a lot of my favorite romances that you own. Oh no, so not a wild card! I realized that I can't have you wait any longer to read it. You need to read it now. The book is Before I Let Go by Kendi Ryan. Before I Let Go by Kendi Ryan. Oh no, oh no. Alana is recommending me a book that I did not take off of my list. I actually read this one last month for February. And yeah, I mean, I did love it. So that's a good recommendation, but I'm gonna have to get her to recommend me another book. So let me message Alana and see if she can possibly get me a video for another recommendation because obviously I've already read Before I Let Go. Ooh. Which if you guys are interested in that one, I'll go ahead and link it up in the cards. And this is definitely not Alana's fault because I give creators like a general like, hey, I'd love you to recommend me this book, but you can recommend me any book you want. So like technically they don't have to recommend in the genre. I'm just trying to keep it fair for everybody. 
So we'll see how that goes. I'm sure she can get me another recommendation. I'll just have to include it later on in the video. Okay, so while we're waiting to hear back from Alana, let's go ahead and go to our last contender for this series this month. All right, so this is actually a... Um, Instagrammer that we've been following for a while has literally hilarious reels, but but the aesthetic of the Instagram Mwah. It is Oscar from Books T. Henny and obviously to the shock of no one We know that we are about to get a really good rag. So I'm super excited to see this video to see what book Oscar recommends me <laughs> I'm so silly. All right, let's see. I'm nervous. Hey Christine, it's Oscar, and I'm here to give you my book recommendation. So my book recommendation for you is Empty Houses by Brenda Navarro. Um, and before I go into what this book is about, I want to read you the first few lines of this book because I, as a reader personally, I judge books by their first line. I mean, some people do covers. I mean, look at this cover though, <laughs> okay? So, not me being serenaded covers, right now. Lines. So let's get into it. So, Daniel disappeared three months, two days, and eight hours after his birthday. He was three. He was my son. Okay, listen, when I read those first few lines, I had to get this book instantly. And I remember getting it in the mail, and I read it in like one day, when I knew nothing it was. This book is so juicy, I'm telling you right now. It's at the edge of your seat type of juicy i couldn't stop reading so this book follows two different women one woman um, has a child um and that child is stolen from her um while they're in the park um the other woman desperately wants a child and she's actually the person who stole this other woman's child at the park and the child is daniel um and the whole book the whole novel follows these two different women um, and it asks us these interesting questions about motherhood and society as a whole and, and the society, the weight that society puts on mothers. Um, and it, it just makes you question these ideas in a very interesting way. Um, and I think the writer does a brilliant job of raising those questions and trying to answer some of these anxiety or you know, trying to pick up those anxieties. And very in this interesting plot uh, of these two different women um, and it's just a ride it's just an accelerating ride it is extraordinary these two characters are unforgettable I read this a year ago and I still am a little bit haunted by it um, oh God. so yeah that is my book wreck for you uh, hopefully you pick it uh, I'm crossing my fingers <laughs> Not everybody being like lit fic is not going to entertain you. So let's do something a little thrilling as well. Wow. Okay. I love that. I have no idea what that is, Oscar. So that's a great recommendation. Like, look at me expanding my interests, expanding my reading. Wow. Oh, the motherhood thing. That's going to be crazy. Like, can you imagine somebody steals your child? Also, like, does it go into, like, she obviously keeps the child for a while. Uh, I'm already thinking about it. Wow. Okay. Really exciting. Okay. Well, that was such a good wreck. Wow. Thank you, Oscar. Okay. So, unfortunately, I messed up about not keeping my red TBR updated. Ooh, hoo, hoo. That was a big no-no on me. But it's fine because we will talk to Alana. We will get her book wreck and we'll come back and see what she recommends. Not her doing the twist, you know what I mean? Not her being like, ooh, you thought it was gonna be lific, but I'm actually gonna recommend you romance. What a time. <sighs> it wouldn't be the Rumi's Digest if something chaotic didn't happen, you know what I mean? All right, well, I am really excited to get my hands on these books. Sorry for the hiccup, but we will get the other recommendation later on in the video. And I'm excited to get started. I'm excited to get my lit fic on, my general lit fic one. So happy you guys are here. Thanks for joining me again and let's get into the video. Okay guys, so I got another recommendation from Ilana and I'm really excited for this video. So let's see what she has to recommend me. Hi Christine. Thank you so much for asking me to be a part of this and represent Book Talk. I am truly honored. I love this you outfit. Have a lot of books that I really love on your unread physical TBR list. So 
I had a little trouble picking. Ultimately though, I decided to go with True Biz. This is a book that came out last summer and I think there was a lot of buzz about it at the time and a lot of people are reading it, but then it kind of died down and I don't know why because I just think this is a Oh my God! For the deaf. The story mainly follows three characters throughout the course of a school year, two students who are deaf and the headmistress. The students are both part of the deaf community in very different ways. One is a transfer student who has never met another deaf person in her life and has been raised around hearing people. And the other is a student who's kind of born into this legacy of other deaf people who have been part of this community and school for years. Then there's also the headmistress who is of hearing but whose wife and mother are both deaf and is trying to keep the school afloat. This book is just a really interesting look into this community that I know I didn't really know much about before I read it. Uh, the author also does an amazing job of educating you along the way and showing visuals for sign language and it managed to be very informative but also very interesting and makes you want to read the whole thing. Thank you again so much for having me and I really hope you enjoy this. That <laughs> first of all first of all can I just say did you mean to match your outfit to the book because that matched perfectly that was amazing. Second of all I am not kidding you when I say I was literally gonna put this in my spring TBR and like last minute was just like, oh, I'll just read it. Like if I get the chance, like I don't wanna tell people that I'm reading it and then not read it because I've been wanting to read this book for so, so, so long. I used to know ASL, like I, I, I took classes when I was younger and was fluent in it, but then kind of lost it because I actually don't have anyone to um, sign with regularly. So like I have a lot, like a, a history, I guess, with ASL um, and I have always like loved that language. <laughs> like I just love using my hands in general and just being able to like communicate with, with just signing. Uh, it is just, it's just honestly so cool to me. And so that's amazing that you picked this book because that's one of my book of the month books. So wow, let me just, I mean like literally it's sitting right here, like literally, literally sitting right here. I'm so excited. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, so this month is gonna be really hard. This month is gonna be really hard, okay. Cool. Well, that's the book that I'm gonna be reading. Super excited. What a list of books. Like I have no idea what to expect from really any of these. So excited to get into it. I will say that today I'm actually gonna be meeting up with Stephanie from Stephanie Bookish and Casey from Casey Can Read because Casey is in town. She's visiting LA and staying with Stephanie. So I'm gonna go meet up with them. I think we're gonna just hang out. So that's what we're gonna be doing. I'll see you guys in a little bit. I also have no idea which book I'm gonna start. Maybe this one, cause I own it and I have to get the other two from the library. I'm. All right, see you guys in a little bit. OMG, time flies pretty fast. Mom told me no one's ever last. And five, four, three, step out of the nest. Let's first start straight away. I don't want to waste my time complaining. I don't want to trade places for no one. Life will please my eyes shut down. For I realize what the real man is living. I don't want to no. No, no, all I want is leave love, love Cause we never know, life's too short to be taken for granted Okay, y'all, so I'm officially in my ready girl era. Um, my hair is washed, I have put on makeup, and I'm ready to go and do some errands. I know I've talked about this in every single vlog, but it is truly really crazy that it's raining so much in LA this year. Like, I cannot wait for spring because I'm pretty sure everything is gonna be green, 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 and it's gonna just be a beautiful, you know, spring wonderland. So like I said today, I'm gonna be doing some errands, but before I get into the errands portion, the B-roll portion, I do wanna to talk to you guys because I finished True Biz. She's stunning. I feel like earlier when I was talking about my thoughts and opinions on this, I was kind of jumbled because I was just like, what am I even gonna say about this? But essentially this is just highlighting, I wanna say the experiences and kind of like the everyday life of deaf 
people and living with deafness. It's just something that like if you are not deaf, you don't think about this kind of things. It's it's similar to any other sort of disability. Like if you don't experience that certain thing every day, you don't really think about it, right? For me, I also don't really know that much about deaf history, deaf culture. And so this book was really like enlightening in a very like compelling and like interesting way. I'm making it sound like more academic, but it truly is just like this fictional story um, about, you know, this this group of people who are all connected by this uh, boarding school. I thought this was done so, so well. The writing is so good. It immediately sucked me in to the story and I was interested with it. I, I'm not sure if that's because I'm already interested in like ASL as a language and also just kind of like the experiences of people who live with disabilities. Like I really enjoy reading those kind of stories. So I'm not sure if it's that or like what, but I did have a really good time with this one. And I mean, it was good. It was really good. There is not a single quotation mark in this book. Basically when signing is happening, the words are italicized and then other conversations that happen between like hearing people, those are, are not put in quotations at all. So I thought that was a really cool way to write this book. Um, very easy, easy to understand. Also with the multimedia aspects, like it not only educated on like deaf history, but also like some signs and kind of like how ASL is used. For me, like with my kind of like basic study of ASL, I definitely did not get into like the deeper kind of like ways to communicate. So I thought that was super interesting for me because I'm also learning, you know, more about this language that I really, really love and enjoy. Last but not least, I just want to highlight this one moment in here because I I didn't really know much about it. I didn't really understand it before I read this book, but there was a huge kind of like, not debate, but like a huge portion of this that was talking about cochlear implants. And for me being a hearing person, I thought that basically when you get a cochlear implant, I knew that it wasn't necessarily like you could hear voices, but I knew that the kind of like um, sounds when they get inputted into the cochlear, it, it inputs into your brain in kind of like a robotic way. So for me, I was like, okay, well, it's not necessarily like being hearing, but you can hear something. But this book really kind of highlighted the negatives of a cochlear implant and kind of how harmful it can be. And I just thought that whole discussion, that whole part in this book was so powerful and so good because there's a minor in here who has a cochlear implant and she's struggling because her mom basically cannot handle the fact that she is deaf. Like she cannot accept it. She doesn't learn, her mom does not learn ASL to communicate with her daughter. She actually withheld ASL as a language from her when she was younger. So this, this girl didn't even learn it until she was in high school. And it's just like, all these things are adding, adding, adding up. The young girl, she's like 16 at the time. And she's like, I really just don't want a cochlear implant. Like it doesn't work for me. You know, goes into the discussion of like all the bad things about it. Um, but her mom is so insistent that she be more like quote unquote normal or more like hearing that like she keeps pushing her and pushing her and pushing her. And I just thought that whole entire part, like that is an integral part of the story. And I thought that was done so well because I had no idea. Like, I, I mean, obviously you don't want to have to walk around with like a piece of metal in your head. You know what I mean? If you don't have to. But like that whole part really got me thinking because there's another part where you basically have to figure out when the child is younger, if you know that they're deaf, you have to decide if you want the cochlear implant, you know, at a young age or if you don't. And that's a huge, huge decision because you don't know if the cochlear implant is going to work. You don't know if the cochlear implant is going to hurt your child because at that point, like, it's a baby. The baby is a baby. The baby can't tell you if they're in pain. You know what I mean? But if you don't implant the cochlear at a young age, it's almost as if, like, you'll miss, like, a window of opportunity for, like, using language and, like, interpreting the sounds. I, I know that that's not every case, but, like, that was a huge decision in this book. And I just thought to myself, like if I was a parent and I had to think and be like, okay, like would I give my child a cochlear implant or not like that? I was like fighting with this decision while I was reading this book. I was like, I don't know what I would do. I'm not sure. 
because I would want to protect my child. But also I'm like, there's really a lot of strength in just not having a cochlear implant and just using ASL and not having to speak. I know it's not necessarily like making the, the best at being bilingual because it might hinder them a little bit with learning English um, and spoken English, but like, I don't know, like that decision was so hard for me. So I thought that was really important because I was like, I'm sitting here fretting about this decision and it was a really, really good part of this book. So anyway, I've talked a lot about it. I hope you guys really picked this one up, especially if you're interested in books that have disability rep. I thought this was done super, super well. And like I said, I've been wanting to read this for a while. So this book did not disappoint. And yeah, I think that's all I wanna say. So I'll get you guys the rating for this one at the end. Y'all know I do the call pile at the end with all the books, but yeah, I'm going to go and do some errands today and then come back. I, I have the day off, so I'm imagining I'm going to start another one of the books. I'm not sure which one it's going to be. So it's going to be a wild card. It's going to be a, it's going to be a wild time, but that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, and yeah, I'll basically just check in with you guys in a little bit. Also, did you see the cute cookies that I made for the Oscars? We, we went to like an Oscars viewing party and every, it was like a potluck. Everybody had to like make some kind of food that like related to one of the Oscar nominated films. And I made the little cookies from everything everywhere all at once. I don't know if you guys saw that clip, but yeah, I made those cookies. It's the one that Jamie Lee Curtis is eating that like the family basically brought to the IRS to like placate her for their appointment. I really like those. It's a version of like the, I. I think it's like the Chinese almond cookie and it was really easy to make. It was awesome. So anyway, if you guys are interested in that recipe, I definitely got it off of Pinterest, but I will link it down below so you guys can make your own version. But anyway, okay, that's it. That's the drama. That's the tea. I'm going to get going because I'm pretty sure it's going to start raining. So that's my life now. I'm basically living in the Pacific Northwest. Awesome. Hey guys. Okay. So I felt like I needed to check in with you because I'm 50 50 pages into empty houses right now. And this was the one that was about the two moms, right? Or, well, really it's only one mom, a child abductor. Yeah, so that's this book. And it starts out with the POV of the mom who has lost her child, um, Daniel. And it's basically just going into like the grief that she's feeling and kind of like regret of, you know, kind of what she did when Daniel was taken, because in this specific situation, she was like in the midst of like a lover's quarrel. She was like texting on her phone and she wasn't really paying attention to her kid. And she would periodically like look up to make sure that he was there. But then like after kind of like getting into this like heated argument sort of she looks up again and daniel's gone scariest thing in the world like i cannot even imagine so already the stakes are super high for just like her pov and like her kind of like feelings in this moment i'm really liking it because i think i've told you guys this before but i like to read stories about grief and kind of like how people deal with their emotions. I think it's fascinating to me um, because everybody's different and everybody does that in a different way, but everybody experiences that at one point. So it's just so interesting to kind of see like how a person is going to react to things based off of like their life experiences and like who they are as a person. So in the beginning of this book, she is just in a pit of despair and she is so hard on herself about basically like misplacing Daniel, like ha not paying attention and being like a negligent mother while also explaining that she and her ex had like taken in his niece as their daughter and explaining how like she regrets that like it wasn't the daughter and that it was her actual son, Daniel. That is a whole interesting like thing to me as well, because immediately when I started off this book, I was like, oh, this woman is not like as motherly as like a, a like a like a helicopter parent would be. You know what I mean? And I don't even know if that's like a correct assumption, if that's like a correct kind of like view of her, but like she definitely was like a lax er ish mom. So in my brain, like she has all this regret and guilt and stuff because she's like, I couldn't do everything that I could do. Like I wasn't focused on my son. And that's like so interesting to me because in the same moment, like as she's grieving, she is not paying attention to her like daughter, right? Who she says a lot in the book, like 
she's like, this is not actually my daughter. Like she's, she's nothing to me. Like I wish it was her that had been taken instead of him. So already like the stakes are so high with this main character and it's just like already hitting. Like, I'm just like, uh, we're immediately, we're immediately in it. You know what I mean? So it's really crazy. And I felt like I needed to check in because I feel as though this is a shorter book. So much has happened already and and I want to be able to kind of give you guys updates and really get into like a character analysis of these characters because I feel like this is like super just like juicy. Definitely juicy, 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 which is great because that's what Oscar said it was going to be. So yeah, anyway, I think kind of like just going back really quickly to that point of like how our first mom, she is like not momming as much as a mom could. I, I just think that's so interesting because she's got like 20,000 other things on the brain, but then once she loses her son, she's like all about her son. That's the impression that I was getting from this. Not saying she's not a great mom, right? Like I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying her view after he left is like that she had like the perfect boy and like the perfect relationship and like she just wants that back. But like, is that actually how it was? You know what I mean? Is that actually how it was? I don't know, it's hitting. There's a quote that I do wanna share with you guys that I just think is so interesting. So the lover's quarrel she was in, I'm about to tell y'all some tea cause she's already up in here with some tea. But the lover's quarrel she was in was between Vladimir, who is her like lover, and then Fran, who is the father of her child, Daniel. And also like the uncle to her like stepchild, I guess, or like her adopted daughter. Vladimir was like her lover from the start. Like she was cheating on Fran with Vladimir, okay? And I'm like, okay, sis, if that's what you wanna do, that's what you wanna do. And that is just so interesting to me because the reason why she was at that park with Daniel that day is because she was in a fight with her lover, right? And she wanted to like get her mind off things. So like in part, they are there because of that. So after Daniel gets taken, she gets very mad at Vladimir. And she's like, how dare you like be normal and not feel anything when it was like your fault that he left, you know what I mean? Or not he left, but that he was taken. And that's such an, a dangerous route to go on. Like the blame game, whenever something happens, dangerous to go down that route, right? Because was it really Vladimir's fault? No, I mean, it was a bunch of little things that added up to this moment of like opportunity where Daniel was taken by somebody else. But like, ultimately, like, is it because you weren't watching him like a hawk? You know, is it because you were there that day? And it can all kind of be traced back to this quote, specific situation, she's like fake arguing with Vladimir, AKA like in her brain, she's, you know how when you get mad at somebody or like you wish you should have said something in an argument, you like run it through your head and you're like, These, this is what I should have said to you, you know, bucko. That's what this is. So she's having a conversation with Vladimir and she says, do you know I had a child as an excuse to get away from you? Could there be a stupider reason to have children? I had a child to keep you at arm's length. And how idiotic of me when in the end, it was you who walked away. She didn't even want to have a kid, but she thought having a kid with Fran would repair their relationship and she wouldn't go off with Vladimir. Oh my God, the drama y'all, the freaking drama. I'm just like, oh my God. I didn't know I was gonna come up in here and like be put upon like this. So anyway, I just wanted to keep you guys updated because I've been reading this book. I feel like it's gonna go quick. So we gotta check in when we can. Actually, I am going to keep reading until Monique just picked up some fast food for us from Astro Burger. So I'm gonna keep reading until she gets home and then we're gonna watch The Night Agent which not sponsored, even though we did do a sponsor post on our Instagram. So if you guys are over there in that world, you know what we're talking about. But like we went to this um, premiere event for this Netflix show and I'm like so excited to continue the show. It's like an action adventure kind of like FBI agent bodyguard story. And me and Monique have been wanting to like watch it since it came out. Um, and we watched like the first episode this past week. So we're gonna start watching that and then probably like go our separate ways because she has to, well, she doesn't have to, but she wants to read some books for the Trans Rights Readathon. You guys are getting all the updates on what we're doing right now. And then I'm gonna continue reading this book. So I'll probably give you guys some cute, crazy, up, uh, not cute, arguably, but I'll probably give you guys some updates for that because this book is going by like, I'm eating it up. The drama? The drama is real. Anyway, I'll see you guys in a little bit. They have some great dishes. <laughs> they have some great. We'll be doing this again next month. 
a little more organized, I feel. It was hard to talk about a book and bake at the same time. <laughs> Cut. Now, do you have to mix it all together before you drink it? Yeah. I usually do. All right, you ready? I'm catching it all. For the close-up of the Jim Beam. It's hard to do this. Okay. What do you want me to Just do? Just do it. <laughs> Why are you laughing? This is not going. It just has a lot on top. How did I make so much? It was good. Tastes delicious. I'm glad. That's the important thing. Mmm. This looks like a mess. <laughs> Version of the TikTok whipped coffee. It's delicious. I think I might have put a little too much like instant coffee in it and that's why it looks crazy. Monique was like, oh, it looks like you could have added some kind of like alcohol or something in it. Like it looks like a Jim Beam coffee. And I'm like, I don't know what that means, but it's just coffee, I swear. Today is Saturday. And as you guys might have seen, I made some whipped coffee. Monique had her baking book club today, like her first uh, live where they made donuts. She hasn't finished making her donuts yet because she had to like redo something with the dough. But Lisa and Nikki both successfully made amazing baked goods. Nikki made like a Nutella type of donut. Um, and I think, I think she added something else. I'm not sure. I can't remember what she said, but it looked really, really good. And then Lisa made apple fritters, which I am a little biased because I love apple flavored stuff. Like I love apple pie, apple fritters, apple turnovers. Like we're just living our best apple lives. But she made those and they also looked really freaking good. So you guys, kudos to you because I could never bake a day in my life. I can barely make this whipped iced coffee to be fair. So they made that. And then Monique is making like a matcha filled, a matcha tiramisu filled donut. I think it's tiramisu filled or it might just be like a tiramisu flavored donut with matcha on the inside. I'm not sure but I'll get you guys the b-roll of that and actually the whipped coffee b-roll and all that will be after this vlog check-in so you guys will see the uh, completion of that and kind of like what those look like but I'm really excited because whenever Monique bakes anything I get to obviously have a little a little taste so i'm excited for that to be a part of my saturday today um but yeah so let's go over like what's going on i finished empty houses i finished empty houses and it was really crazy like obviously in the first check-in i didn't really talk about the second like mother like the second character to this day i don't know if i know their names i don't know if i know the first mom's name or the second mom, like I know all the other characters, but I'm not sure if they ever said their names. So that's, that's an interesting thing. Cause I'm like, was that on purpose? Obviously it was, but for what reason? I'm not smart enough to tell you. I, I cannot fathom. But anyway, so I still don't know their names, but the second mom, so she was a little problematic to me. She, <laughs> she had some things going on. Like obviously mentally she's already problematic because she's stealing a child right from the playground. So there's that. But also I thought that this, like without giving away anything about the the later half of the books, I feel like there are some like reveals that kind of talk about why the characters act the way they do. I thought it was so interesting how similar these two women were because they both at their core being, I think they both didn't want to be moms. Like they did not want to be mothers. And the first woman, I think I already kind of talked about it, but she, you know, had had her child to kind of like distract her from this love interest. And the second woman was also like bringing this child into her home because she was trying to keep together like her and her man. That whole like, honestly, like serving the like picture perfect life of like a family and like trying to keep the man in the home because you have a child. I mean, like, I feel like that happens a lot. And it was just so interesting that both women tried to do that with this one child, like with Daniel. And like, ultimately that didn't work. Daniel ended up being autistic, which kind of shocked me at first because I was like, whoa, I didn't know this was gonna be like that, like a book with an autistic character. So that kind of shocked me because I was like, oh no, I don't want something like bad to happen to him because it's just gonna like make me cry. But he, is autistic and that was interesting because the second 
mom or the second woman, she didn't realize that he was autistic, but she like brought him home and he would have trouble expressing himself. And she was like, what's wrong with you? And it, it, it really broke my heart because like she called him, she called him the R word and she was not nice to him sometimes. And it just really, I was like, oh my God, I don't know if I can like continue with this. Um, cause that's like my worst nightmare, honestly. Not, I can't speak for every autistic person out there, but for me, I'm like, one of my things is being misunderstood. And it's like the whole, it's like the, the pillar of being autistic is like you're, you're misunderstood by a lot of people a lot of times. Daniel, I love that child so much. Like I want to just take him home myself and just care for him because honestly, even if he had been, even if he had stayed with his first mom, it's like later revealed that she had these like very horrible thoughts of like just like not really wanting to be a mother and like not even wanting to have him in the first place because he's autistic and because he was hard to um raise and hard to just kind of like be around because he didn't express love in the same way that like someone who's neurotypical would so that was really hard for me to read too because as i'm reading the book daniel he did express himself he did express love but it wasn't towards his mom and it was almost because she didn't take the time to like understand him like I really do believe that and that his whole character was just so interesting to me because when he got taken to the second house with the second mom he kept saying ore 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 tita ore tita ore and basically what he was saying is like he he had his sister the girl who the first mom she like didn't really want to have anything to do with she would like take care of him in the first house and she would like sing him to sleep and like she would like uh rub his face and like she would just be so kind to him and like make him laugh and like love him and she loved him for like the way that he was right like the way that he is like because he's autistic not in despite of and so when he goes to the second house he's crying because her name is i was reading it as nagore but then he started saying ore 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 and i was like okay so her name's nagore and he was saying tita because it's like tito like you know like um like auntie. So that was heartbreaking because that obviously when you're in the POV of the second mom, like she doesn't understand why he keeps saying this one thing, like why he keeps repeating ore, 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 because he, in his brain is like, he's, he misses his sister. Like he wants his, his like auntie, like some, he wants that comfort from Nagore, but obviously because he was taken, he's not getting it from the second person. And because he kept repeating himself, and this is an autistic trait, it's like in times of stress, sometimes, obviously it's different per child or like per person, but like some, most times you start repeating yourself or like doing a repetitive action because it's comforting to have like, just like the, I, I don't know how to explain it. It's just comforting, basically. And so in that moment of stress where he was just so upset and just so terrified, he was like crying out for his sister. And I was like, oh my God, only like a neurodivergent person would understand this part of this book. And it was really sad for me. So anyway, not to make it all about autism, okay? But that was a huge part of this book. And I, I, I feel like if you're neurotypical and you don't understand it, you, it's like a small part, right? You just don't get it. But that whole entire part, I was like zeroed in on this like whole experience that Daniel was having. So it wasn't even like me reading the book and like wanting one mom or the other mom to like keep Daniel. Really, I just wanted Daniel to be okay, which leads me to the end of the book and kind of like where I, I'm not going to get into spoilers if you guys want to read this because I do think it's like an interesting book and a very short read so you can read it really quickly. But by the end of the book, it ends in a way where there is a revelation, there is a reveal at the very, very end, it's literally like the last paragraph. You are in a place where you don't know what happens like after that point. Does that make sense? Like you don't know where it goes after that. And like, I'm pretty sure you can infer what has happened, but it's not like laid out for you. And because of just like all these little tiny things, kind of like what I was saying before, because of all these like little tiny things that have happened in this book, these little tiny things that have happened to these characters before Daniel gets taken, that's like what makes these characters like a little crazy. That's what makes them negligent. That's what makes them imperfect and also kind of like horrible. And I just thought this book was, was good because 
a lot of times you read books and like, you know, you want your character to be perfect. You want your character to be super relatable, right? And you want them to be good. And I think in this one, it's, it's not necessarily that they were bad, but they definitely weren't good people at the end of the day, you know, but they're not perfect and they're human. I didn't really like them. I think my favorite character is probably Nagore. They're just human. And I think that was also a really big part of this book. It's just like these two women wanted love so bad and they wanted, they strove for this perfection in their lives. And to them, it meant like having a family, having kids, you know, being well off, you know, having a job, being able to pay rent or like whatever. And at the end of the day, it's like, you can have all those things and still not be perfect and still not have a perfect life. Like if you're not happy. And in my opinion, if you don't go to therapy, <laughs> because everyone in this book needed therapy, like hardcore. Some of the events in this book were so crazy. Like I couldn't even believe I was reading them. I'm like, oh my God, I cannot believe this happened to these characters. Horrible, heartbreaking. Wow. Like I'm, I'm going to sit on this and like really think about it because I my like my call pile rating. I don't even know. I don't even know. Like it's like, it's going to be a wild time. Anyway, I'm excited to, to, to figure it out and see what it is because you know the good thing about the crawl pile is it makes you really think about like what are my, what am I rating this book you know what I mean like why did I like it or why did I not like it and maybe because I don't like it it still gets a good rating you know because it's thought provoking and it makes you makes you feel something but yeah anyway okay well thank you for that recommendation Oscar wow what a time so Last but not least, we are going to be starting the book that actually it, I won't, we won't be starting. Okay. I've already started this book. I've started it on audio and I'm so glad that I did because I actually have some chores that I want to get done today. I got to clean the bathroom. got to pick up my room. Yeah. Like what's going on back here. So I've got some chores. I'm going to be doing the audiobook of, I can never remember the name of this book, but I'm going to pop it up right here. So y'all already know what it is. But when I started it, this book is definitely exactly what Noelle was talking about. Like it's definitely like whimsical, magical. Like I don't really know what's going on. It starts off with this older woman who um, essentially she's like living pretty like uh, not sequestered. What is, what is good? Secluded. There we go. She's living a pretty secluded life. Um, probably one of the most memorable things she first says is that she's like, I wash my feet every night in case I die in the middle of the night, then I'll at least be clean for them to take me to the mortuary. And obviously that's morbid, but also I was like, she's kind of smart. She's kind of on another level. So it's her and then she's got two neighbors. So the book starts out like in this in this kind of setting and one of her neighbors has died and her other neighbor has come over to be like, hey, we gotta go help our friend, like help our, not really friend, but like help our neighbor who never really liked us, but like he's our neighbor. So let's like go take care of his body. And so it already kind of like started off like that. And I, I remember when I first started this like a, a week ago or like a couple of days ago, I was like, hmm, I think I'm gonna have to like not be doing errands when I do this. Like I need to be doing like a chore, like an activity. I think I'm gonna be doing my chores today and then I think I'm gonna update my bullet journal and I'll get into the audiobook and I'll have more of a check-in because obviously I know that's vague. It's like, what is this book even about? But I can already like get the vibes that Noelle was telling me. Like it is whimsical. It is like that. So anyway, I'll have a better check-in in a little bit, but I'm excited to get into it. Like so far Litfic, Y'all are killing it. Y'all are killing it. I mean, everybody's killing it, but like, I'm surprised because I really, I mean, not that I hate lit fic, but it's just, I don't gravitate towards it. So I'm having a good time. Let me think, is that all that I want to say? I think that's all I want to say for now. Okay, cool. See you guys in a little bit. All right. So here we are. I am 40% into the name of the book that I'm gonna say right now, which is Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead. Okay, so I'm 40% into this book. <clears throat> and essentially the plot is the everyday life of this older woman. And through her kind of like everyday experiences, she really shows her character and she really shows her personality 
through like her internal monologue of like these things that are happening in her life. She has some, probably some of the best thoughts and questions about life just in general. Like I find myself wanting to highlight a lot of what she's saying. In fact, I had to pause because there, the reason why I stopped is because there is a quote that she was saying and I didn't realize it was such a good quote until she's like halfway through the paragraph, like saying like the rest of it. And then I was like, wait, I gotta stop this because it's on audio. So I have to like actually write down the quote, like re-listen to it to basically make sure I'm getting all the words right. But yeah, so I just decided to stop and do a check-in because I'm almost at 50%. She's just, she's just a thoughtful person. Like she's basically the Snow White of Poland, okay? Because this is a translated work from Polish and you know, she's she's just living her best like woodland witchy cozy life up in this secluded house. You know, she's definitely like what I would call an astro girly. Like she's into astronomy. She's into the birth charts, the zodiacs, the zodiacs. She's into the zodiac. She is an animal lover. Like when I say she's the Snow White of Poland, she is talking to animals. She is advocating for them. She's like, it is illegal to poach. She's out here reporting to the police, doing all this animal advocate stuff, which is great. She just, I think the, the one quote that really stuck out to me, and I'm paraphrasing, but she essentially was like, we don't stand up for things and they become, and those like horrible things, like poaching, right, become the norm then when we're passing by a butcher shop and the meat is hanging on the hooks we don't look at the meat and think about where that meat came from it's normal so we just let it go because it becomes a normal part of life and she said so if that becomes the thinking then what happens when we have nazi concentration camps and that becomes a normal thing where you see people dying in the window of a shop but you don't stop and say anything because you think it's the norm. And I'm like, okay, you're on a higher level than all of us. You're on a higher level than all of us. So I can't say that the plot of the book is super engaging. I am kind of like falling out of the story a little bit. I don't know if that's because it's on audio. I'm not sure, but like, I'm liking what she's saying though. Like she has really good points, you know what I mean? But it's kind of like when she gets stuck on the mundane parts of life, that's when I get a little, I get a little, I wanna say bored, but I get a little like, all right, where are we going with this? But then every now and then she'll sprinkle in some knowledge. She's like, I'm just gonna teach you something real quick. Sprinkle that in there. So she does have like really good points. So the character I would say, good. The plot though, Mm, we'll see where it goes. Cause I'm trying to figure out what is gonna happen. Like, does it end with her death? Like what's going on? Anyway, that's my check-in. There's really not much to report other than, you know, her, her neighbor died and I think she adopted his dog and everybody thinks she's like the crazy kooky lady that lives on the top of the hill. So yeah, once I finish this, the next time I see you guys, I will be coming back to give you the final thoughts on this book and the cop owl ratings. So, woo, we're almost done. <sighs> okay, see you guys in a little bit. All right, everybody, so it is another rainy day in LA. I love how we opened up the vlog with rain. We had some good days in between and now at the end, it is raining once again. Monique's gonna kill me for showing you guys this. Ah! This is the donut. I, did, I like heated it up so it looks like a little crazy because I like to have a little warm donut. But that this is the donut that Monique made. The green is the matcha flavoring, like the filling. Mmm. Mmm. Nothing like fried bread with sugar. You know what I mean? Anyway, neither here nor there. That's what's going on. Let's get into the final book for this vlog. Drive your plow over the bones. Damn it. Drive your plow over the bones of the dead. I think I got that title right. Okay, we'll pop it up and see. Okay, so this book, 
This book was so interesting. I didn't know what was going on for the longest time. And I honestly was like, wow, I don't think I'm smart enough to read this book. Like, I don't think I'm smart enough to know what's going on because I felt like there was a lot of like underlying things that maybe I was missing, maybe because it's translated, I'm not sure. But I just kept thinking to myself, wow, Noelle is so much smarter than me. She really enjoyed this book where I am not enjoying it, okay? I'm not enjoying it because granted our main character, Mrs. Douche, Douchaka, douche, douche, douche something, stop saying douche, would have these like great like looks on life and values on life, but the actual plot of the book was not getting me. And in all honesty, if I was reading this, I probably would have like soft DNF'd it if it wasn't for a vlog. Like I probably would have eventually had just put it down and probably would have never picked it up again. Not because I was hating the writing, but I really just didn't see where the plot was going. And that was a problem for me. I was just like, what? why is everything disjointed? Because it was like a day in the life of Snow White at 85 years old. You know what I mean? Like she never had kids. She like never got with the prince and she's now like a woodland fairy person who everybody is kind of like, mm. Mm. so all that being said, I pushed through. I pushed through because I was like, Noelle wouldn't steer me wrong, even though she's much smarter than me. Okay. She probably thinks that I'm really going to enjoy this because she thinks I'm smart. And little does she know, little does she know. Anyway, so I pushed through and at the 91%, 91% of the audio, something crazy happened. I'm talking like, I thought I was reading a certain genre of book and it completely like changed the whole thing. Like it changed the whole thing of the book. And I can't talk to you guys about it. I can't tell you really anything about it because it will ruin it. You know what I mean? And you have to experience it. You know what I mean? I'm not saying this book is for everyone because I truly think a lot of people will probably not get to that point. But like, if you get to that point, you'll know what I'm talking about. At the 91% mark, I was like, whoa. And, and that's when I was riveted. Okay. I was stuck in the book. Like I literally had been listening to this audio, doing stuff on my iPad every time I picked it up or like doing my bullet journal or doing something else. At the 91% mark, I had to put everything down and I just sat and listened. I just sat and listened. That was a great ending because I'm going to tell you that book was going steady down and that made it go, you know, a little up, you know, we weren't like but we were at least going middle, middle ground. So I just kind of was like, wow, I can't believe that just happened. And I remember just last night experiencing it and being like, wow, this 10% this of the book just saved the ending for me. Like it saved the experience for me because I was on the edge of my seat about it. So I can't really tell you much more than that, but I can tell you that the whole entire time we're with our main character, Essentially, these people in her village keep dying and everyone in the village is trying to figure out like what, like who's killing them, what's going on. And our main character, of course, she is advocating that it is the creatures, like it is the um, woodland animals. They are killing these men because these men all end up being like part of this like bigger poaching storyline, like they're poachers. And so she is convinced that it is the animals that have taken revenge on these men and are like fighting back, okay? And the more I think about the storyline, because she's she's an astrologer, you know, she um, she's very like, she like cares about animals. She lives alone, she never had kids. The more I think about her, the more I think this could be me. This could be my future. And also the way that she reacted to this like ending thing, the way that she like, did that whole thing. I'm like, okay, like you, you have changed your whole character analysis for me. And I almost, I like wish that the book had maybe done that a little sooner and then gone into like more of what happened. This is all vague. I can't tell you any more than that, but like, I, I just wish that that maybe had happened a little sooner so that my interest would have been more piqued because it was really just kind of like honest, honestly a slog to
to get through with like a few sprinkles of interesting stuff because I did think that her view on the world was really interesting. Like she's obviously a smart, intelligent woman and really funny. Like there was a line, the line that she said that had me rolling was no one pays attention to old biddies like me. So much to be said in this book. Like there's so much to be said because she's she's right. Once women hit a certain age, it's almost as if they're they're not valued anymore. You know what I mean? Like no one pays attention to them. And to a certain extent, men sometimes, but a lot of times when when women get older, they just kind of get like, you know, pushed under the rug. They kind of get um, forgotten in some ways. And that gave her a sense of freedom because no one was like paying attention to her at some points. So anyway, this all seems really just disjointed. Like I liked the messages. I liked her view on life. It's just the plot. And we all know that the plot is important to me. So it'll be really interesting to see what the call pile is for this one because... Whoa. Going into the call pile for True Biz, we're gonna start with that one because we read that one first. The characters in this one were fine. Like they, they, they weren't mediocre because they did have substance to them, but like the story wasn't really about these characters. I don't know how to explain it other than like, I didn't feel like I was in these characters' heads. We had a couple of POVs in this one, but like, I didn't feel feelings towards these characters. You know what I mean? Like I felt like I was just watching them, but I wasn't engaging with them, if that makes sense. So I ended up giving the characters on this one a seven. I was really just interested in the story of this book. Okay, the atmosphere though in True Biz, I loved this one. I thought it was so interesting. I loved the description of the school. I loved kind of diving into the ASL and also deaf history. Like I just thought everything about that was so interesting. So I ended up giving that an eight. The writing in this one was an eight. I was interested. I didn't want to put it down, but it wasn't like I was addicted. You know what I mean? Like the writing style was good. I liked how the like language between, like when they were communicating in ASL, like I liked how that was written out, like as far as like writing style. So that's going to get an eight. The plot in this one is going to be an eight as well. I was liking it, loving it, like learning a lot, so interested in it until, like I said, that very like last tiny little thing. And I was just kind of like, okay, is that it? I just thought it was kind of random and a little like disjointed from the rest of the book, okay? Intrigue is definitely gonna be a nine, not a perfect 10, but I was curious as to where the story was going. Like I was, intrigued by the main general premise of the book, right? I, I wanted to know where we were going and kind of like what we would be getting at the end of the book. The logic in this one is gonna be an eight as well. That kind of goes hand in hand with like the atmosphere writing and plot. My, my question is why did you do that at the end? You know what I mean? Why didn't we continue that little bit? Why didn't we, you know? It seemed like it was wrapped up, but I also was kind of like, I don't know, just didn't feel like it was on the nose. You know what I mean? On the nose. Overall enjoyment, that's gonna be like what I would rate the book without all of these things. That is gonna be a nine. I had a really good time with this one. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. It actually sparked a conversation in our Discord where I was like talking about reading True Biz and I actually found out one of our Discord members is deaf and she gave me some really great resources to pick up ASL again, which I have been doing consistently since I read that book. So like the overall enjoyment of it, it definitely like sparked my love of ASL and also I loved learning about deaf culture and deaf history. Um, I honestly had no idea that there was a black ASL but obviously that makes sense because language develops differently in different communities so it's just like I, I felt like I learned so much from this book and I really enjoyed that that conversation on the cochlear implants like that was something that that to this day, I'm still like, what would I have chose? What would I have chose? So that's definitely gonna be a nine for enjoyment. Let's go ahead and calculate the final rating for that one. I feel like this one's gonna be pretty high. Okay, so that one was an eight. That one's an eight. An eight out of 10, which is a 4.5 stars. Smack dab on the nose. It's a low 4.5, but it is a 4.5, which feels right. I feel like that's exactly how much I enjoyed that book. Okay, I just, I, <laughs> my battery died. Like, I mean, honestly, is this the first day that I'm book tubing? Anyway, so we're gonna do the cop pile for Empty Houses. Woo-wee. All right, Empty Houses, the characters in this one 
while I didn't necessarily like them, they were well developed, well written, and they had full stories. I feel like every single character in this book had a full like motivation, had a full backstory, were written really, really well, and they got the point across. You know what I mean? They had those good lines in there that really told you who they were. And so for that one, I'm gonna be giving this an eight, an eight. The atmosphere in Empty Houses, atmosphere is like, did you feel the tension of the setting? You know what I mean? Like, did you feel the descriptions? Like, did it really like get you into the world? This one I felt was a little weak. I thought this was probably one of the weaker parts of this book. I gave it a six. I'm gonna stand by and I'm gonna stick beside her. The writing this one, nine. Nine out of 10. What else would keep me intrigued? Also giving it a nine. Logically speaking, have it all come together in the end so well. Nines across the board. Okay, the plot, also liked the plot of this one. There was a reveal in the end that really just sealed the deal as far as like character work, as far as where the plot was going. I just thought it was interesting. I thought it was an interesting take because anybody can kind of write a book about how a person who is obsessed with having a child you know, steals another person's child. Like anybody can write that book. And then the thief essentially gets off scot-free, has no regrets. They love the child, you know, wh whatever. But not everybody can write a book about regretting the decision to commit a crime. <laughs> and maybe realizing like, it's not all that they thought it was gonna be. Like it, motherhood is not all it's cracked up to be. So I thought that was really, really well. And then overall enjoyment in this one was an eight. Is this necessarily a, a, a book, a, a story I would have picked up on my own? No, which is why I think it's a good recommendation. So let's get into the calculations for the rating. I'm excited for this one. You're kidding me. an 8.3 out of 10. It's a 4.5 stars and it's more than true biz. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> I'm nervous y'all. I'm nervous. I'm nervous to know what plow, plow over the dead, you know, plow me over the, what should we call it? I'm nervous. I'm nervous to see what it is. Okay. Let's get into it. Let's get through it. Wow. That really shocked me. I thought true biz was going to come out on top. Wow. Okay. Starting off with the characters in this one. I feel like our main character is fleshed out so well. Like she knew who she was. She knew what she was doing. She's like towards the later part of her life. Like I just thought she was done so, so, so well. As far as the characters, the side characters in this one, there were lots of side characters, lots of side plots going on. I felt like the descriptions and all of these were really well. And I really liked how our main character, you know, cause we're in her POV. So I really liked how she described every character, how she like really gave them a voice in this one. So I'm gonna give the characters an eight. Would I be friends with any of these people? Maybe, maybe our main character. I might've been friends with her, honestly. I might've been friends with her. The atmosphere in this one was so well done. I felt like I knew exactly where I was like in this small, snowy, isolated, town, every kind of description of like where they were, where they went to. I thought that was done really, really well. I think the only part of the atmosphere that I was kind of a little confused about was this portion of the book where they went to um, the Czech Republic. And that was just like a little, a little bit confusing that whole, that whole part. It, I kind of was just like, all right, what are we doing? What are we doing here? You know what I mean? Got a little, got a little muddled. So I'm going to give that an eight, an eight out of 10. The writing in this one, the writing was good. Like I liked the writing style, okay? This is another translated work, so I can't speak to how it comes off in its original language, but I liked the writing for what it was. Like I liked that there, the, there were morals in there and stuff like that. It's just that the writing of the content, like the, the plot that stuck me, okay? There, were, there wasn't a lot with the writing style that I didn't like. And I liked kind of like having these smaller stories, these smaller kind of definitions woven in with like the main character's knowledge of the world. So I really liked that. I did really like that. So the writing this one, I'm giving an eight out of 10. Plot though, we already know my reservations with that. We already know what I had an issue with. It's getting a six out of 10, unfortunately. That last bit gave it a little bit of a rating, like a little bit of a higher rating. Overall the plot, I was like, kind of like, where are we going? And we laid out a lot of groundwork to get to that 91%, okay? So it was just, we went through a lot. Intrigue two is gonna be a six, self-explanatory. Logic in this one is a 10, 10 out of 10. I thought that the roundup, the wrap up, the thing at the end, 10 out of 10. 
wrapped up so well. I didn't even see it coming. I thought I was reading a certain book and then it pivoted and went the e exact other way. And I thought that was done so well, was done so well, especially for what it is. I feel like there are a lot of ways that that could have been written and done not well. That there, there could have been a lot of like, where the hell did this come from? But when I read it, as I put everything down, like in that 91%, like I was very much like, wow, this all makes sense. Like this is done so well. 10 out of 10, by far one of the best like makes sense logic. I don't even know what, what, what you want to call that, but it's a 10 out of 10. And then overall enjoyment. So I was struggling with this one because it's like when you read a book and you go through it for majority of the book and you're just kind of like meh about it, but then the end is really, really good. It's like, what do you give that book an overall rating? The enjoyment, the entertainment, the very last part of this is really like what you would have rated the book without all the other categories. So like if we weren't doing Cop Owl, what was your overall enjoyment of the book? That's what people usually rate. Like what were your feelings about the book? So in this one, like I probably would have given it like a 3.5 just because the ending was super good. But for most of the book, I was just kind of like mediocre medium about it, right? So in this one, I'm going to be giving it a seven. That feels right to me. I don't think it's an eight. I don't think it's a six per se, maybe like a 6.5, but we're going to go, we're going to round up. We're going to give it a seven and that feels good. So let's go ahead and get into what this one is because I just, I'm so interested to see what this cop pile is going to be. Wow. Wow. Okay. 7.4, 7.4, which means it is a four stars. It is a high four star rating. Wow, a four, a 4.5 and a 4.5. That's crazy. Okay, so this is not what I would have predicted. I would have thought that True Biz would have been like the highest one. It's really all about those characters and plot. Really all about those characters and plot, wow. Okay, so by the skin of its teeth, Empty Houses is the winner of this round. I mean, I'm talking by 0.3, that's how much it went by. So by the skin of its teeth. But overall, Empty Houses was a really good read. Not typically what I would pick up. Across the board, it had a really good score. Okay, so that means that Oscar, you are the winner of this round of Battle of the Books, the lit fic round. I feel like everybody had really great recommendations for me. This by far has been like the most like thought provoking vlog, I think, just like having me read these books that I typically would not pick up. I think there were a ton of good things about each of these books. So with Oscar winning a point for Bookstagram, that means that now, at the end of March. Everyone is officially on the scoreboard. One point for Bookstagram, one point for Book Talk, and one point for Booktube. So obviously we have a pretty even scoring. Oh my god! Now that we have all of the platforms on the board, I feel like it's about to get really freaking serious. Like everything is just getting down to the why. Like this one, was the hardest one that I've had to record so far. Like I really had to think, you know, I really had to make a commitment and that's hard for me as a Gemini. I wanna say thank you again to all of the creators who sent me a video for this round. All of the, obviously another congratulations to Oscar for winning. I feel like the books in this round were so, so, so good. So I highly recommend you guys following these creators, subscribing to their channels, watching their content, engaging, because obviously they can give good recs. And I'm so freaking happy that they said yes to recommending me books. I really appreciate it, you guys. So thank you so much for doing this for me. And like I said, if you're not following them, go ahead and go into the description of this video and click on all of their links. Well, I had a lot of fun with this one. I hope you guys did too with this lit fic. If you guys have any suggestions for the genres or kind of themes that you want me to possibly read when I'm asking creators to give me recommendations, drop those down below. I definitely have some in mind and ones that I want to do, but I'm obviously always open to seeing what you guys also want to watch in these videos. I'm having so much fun with this series. I hope you guys are having a good time with this vlog series too. I feel like I'm reading a lot of books that I might not have picked up and I'm learning a lot. So anyway, that's it. That's the end of the lit fic round, general literary fiction. We will have another episode of Battle of the Books next month and I'm really freaking excited for this one because I've been wanting to read this specific genre of books more, like more consistently, just more. And I feel like we have some real professionals in this one that are just gonna blow me away with the recommendations. So I'm super excited for you guys to watch that episode. 
look out for it at the end of April. And as always, if you want to support me and Monique on this channel, go ahead and like, comment, subscribe to this channel if you're not already subscribed, and you can click that notification bell if you don't wanna miss another video from us. And I think that's everything. Tell me if I missed something. And if I didn't, that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bum, bum, da 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 da, bum, bum, da.